What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is only the 19th time that I've tried to do this video because I apparently suck at intros at the house. I did it on the water, but well, you know, set the mic settings wrong and it sounded like a bat in a blender. It was absolutely awful. So if you guys watched my last video, it was a setup on how to use a Ned rig and how to use a Sanko for beginners. Now in the comments, not the comments of YouTube, but in Instagram, I got a lot of DMs saying, hey, thank you for showing us how to rig it. Can you show us on the water how to use it? So at the beginning of this video, that's what I did. I went and now I didn't get any of the Ned rig footage because they didn't want it. And I really want to show you that it does catch fish. But the Sanko, it's a Sanko, not a lot of detail, but I do teach you how to use it and where I throw it on this, in this video. Now, of course, I switched to other things like a frog and jigs and stuff like that because guys i fish every single day well that i that i can and it gets boring throwing the same thing over and over and over and i love the, the other techniques so you'll see a few of those in there as well but the major portion of this video is me showing you the sanko guys gals if you don't want to go to tackle shops you don't want to go to academy you don't want to go to walmart you don't want to go searching for what i'm telling you I leave links in the description below these videos to let you guys just go there, click the link, order it. It helps the channel. It's free for you guys to do. If it's not your thing, as I've said a million times, go to Academy, go to Walmart, go to your local tackle shops. I'm all about it. The other thing, if you guys are catching fish using the techniques that I'm using, send me a DM on Instagram. Let me see some of those picks and let me know that it worked. Now make sure they're good picks, guys. I used to do professional wrestling and I know what kind of picks some people send, so make sure it's fishing picks. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna really hammer that part home. But we're gonna go ahead and jump to the video because I've been talking for like two minutes and that's a long intro. So we're gonna go ahead and jump to the fishing and hopefully you guys learned something and I hope you really enjoy the video. You guys know what to do if you did, subscribe, all that stuff at, that you do it on outro. I'm just gonna say it now, get it over with. See you guys on the water with past me. Yep. Fellas wearing them out? No? Man. That's not that's not a good thing to hear. Y'all are fishermen supposed to lie to me and say, man, we caught like five, ten pounders and killing me. <laughs> well, have a good one, fellas. Okay, so we've moved on to the next dock. So what I what I want to do is I want to hit all the posts on the outside now the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to cast it directly in the center if you guys if you guys cast it directly in the center and try to pull a fish out you might have fish on these posts and when you drag that fish through guess what happens you scare off all the other fish they don't want it they won't bite it so save that dead center for last okay I got hit right here on this post I think I'm getting smacked by bluegills. Okay, now that I've worked those, I'll come here and I'll get it right there in the center. Wait, see if anything's in there. Now we have overcast, so the chances. Oh, let's say <laughs> it's that simple, guys. <laughs> that simple <laughs> that was easy enough thanks bud well <laughs> again Sanko new spot right in the middle you're done but now you see why, because had I cast right there in the middle and caught that fish, if they'd have been fish right here on these other posts, well, that would have screwed up my fishing on these posts. Now, the way he hit that, there's a pretty good chance that there's more, that there's more fish under there. And I'll be honest with you, with overcast, I'm kind of surprised I even caught one under a dock, because most time when you get overcast, they're moving around, running, blah, blah, blah. They're harder to find. So, but if there's one, Sometimes there's more. 
summertime they like to they like to stockpile with each other and hang out and be buddies oh that was that right there was another one maybe he'll come back for it yep came back for it Ah, a little better. Hey, let me get this hook out. I'm going to need to get my, my pliers. All right, guys. Better fish. Sankos. Thank you. Catching the fishies. So we're going to try that Sanko for a little bit because there's some more fish under this dock, hopefully. And if you guys, during the summer months, if you guys find fish, don't just run off and be like, oh, I found a fish, and then go to the next dock. Cast in a few more times, see if they're in there. They seem to be under this dock, and they seem to really be, like, congregated up. So, hopefully we can get some more, and there wasn't just two, and there was, like, five or six. Okay, so another thing that I do is I'll take this stuff. You can, doesn't matter, you can use JJ's Magic, you can use the Spike It, but I take that skinny end and dip it down just enough to barely cover a little bit of that tail. I don't know if you guys can see that. My camera looks dark. That gives those fish something to target in on and kind of breaks up the, the color pattern. Because, I mean, if you're just throwing something like straight watermelon, straight black and blue, sometimes they won't want that because it doesn't look natural. I mean, think about it. When was the last time you saw a fish with a just a specific color pattern? You won't. You'll see fish that are, they have broken up patterns all over their body. That's, that's a lot of times what will increase the chances of the bite so but they seem to be under like dead square in the center which is i'm telling you guys it's, it's really weird because we have some serious overcast storm weather they kind of should be hitting moving baits hopefully there's more in there though another thing when you guys are fishing you'll see a lot of fishermen go to the front of these docks and of course like i said i'm, I'm hitting I'm hitting the post. I take my time, guys. I'm in a kayak. I'm not in a bass boat. I can't just zoom from one spot to the other. So I really have to pick these docks apart. Now, one thing is, is that where I was casting just now from the side, if I come up here to the front and give it a little bit of a, a different angle of the dangle, and instead of pulling it backside, I pull it to the front, sometimes that'll, that'll you know, get those fish fired up again okay same thing front post let it sink and I'm watching my line guys if I see that line jump at all I know there's a fish there now a lot of times when you guys have current and it's blowing in this way they like to hide almost like an eddy you know what I mean they're trying to just relax so they'll hide for example on the back side of this one because the current's moving this way so they're just waiting for those fish to swim by or land on their head and not see them they come out and ambush now here's the thing guys when you have something like this and it's an overhanging tree i don't have a, a weedless hook on right now but we're going to give it a try if you cast right there underneath that tree a lot of times there will be a bass just hanging out there waiting for bugs to fall or you know, even small birds, bats, stuff like that. They they don't care. They're they're predators. So they're gonna come out and be like, Grr, mine. And hopefully it's your lure that they attack when they go mine. What I'm about to do is a really stupid idea. Shoot. Up oh, up oh, up oh, up oh, up. Oh. Don't you throw my, don't you throw my Sanko. Ah. Now you guys didn't hear the gentleman I was talking to when I first got to the boat ramp. 
they said the most fish they had caught today was five and they had been out here all day i'm at three all right that's how well this senko works awesome they're like i said they're not big but they are biting it which gives me a hint that if i keep throwing this there's a chance that i will absolutely land a monster fish i just gotta weed through all the little ones thanks bud and surprisingly again overcast day but he was in the far back nasty of that stuff and what he's probably done is he's probably followed it out and as i went over that little piece of wood that's on the dock and it let it fall he came up and grabbed it thinking it was a fleeing bait fish all right we got into the nasty of this side let's get into that nasty of the other side over here oh there we go got another one just got to pull him over Dang it. Little sucker through my through my worm. What was that? Four fish, two docks? They guys, take your time. Four fish, two docks, Sankos, all day long. And if if this doesn't prove to you the power of a Sanko and catching fish, guys, I don't know what else to tell you. Thanks, dude. Ooh, teeth are sharp too. Man, chasing shad. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Oh, and I meant to tell you, this chartreuse that I'm using, it's the garlic. I don't know if that matters or not. It might just be the chartreuse, but they, there's a couple people, I'm one of them, <laughs> that will say that, that that little extra flavor of garlic makes them hold on to the bait longer instead of them just tasting plastic and realizing it's something that's not edible. And there's been about two fish on every dock so far so and i've only worked two docks so again back in the nasty watching my line nothing i'm probably gonna get hung dang it this is where weedless hooks come in guys <laughs> so here is a <laughs> volleyball deal so just give it a cast try to get as close to i can as i can to that that post because the fish might be nose to that post and and want what I'm throwing. And behind it, there's some a little grass patch. So maybe that splash will cause something to come out of that grass and hit it. Now with the Texas rig style, you guys, you can, this is really where you want to use that Texas rig style. But for example, the, the wacky rig works on a flat too. And I just, I don't know how well it's going to work in comparison to being around the docks today. But same thing, three little pops once it hits the bottom and go on with your life. Because this is a super flat point. Uh, and there, there's not really a whole lot of fish on it. Now there are some brush piles around it, so I'll flip around those as well. But you're better off using the Texas rig style on stuff like this because it'll shoot forward and cover more water. Ooh. 1.6 feet of water they've let the water down well apparently my freaking osmo died again and didn't give me a warning frogfish mr eat me <laughs> dang it that sucks that'd have been a that'd have been a good fish for the video so biggest fish of the day frogfish thanks bud <laughs> got a little bit of a show i love the shows man Oh, that was, yeah, that was cool. I love frogfish. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. See if there's another one in there. Get it. Get it. Well, this fishing trip's going to get cut real short. Last fish, jig fish. All right, 
Thanks, bud. And all I was doing, the only reason I'm getting ready to head in is because there's there's a lot of thunder. Or I would still be out here, especially after just finally getting to this point that I wanted to get to. Whew. <sighs> I hate hurricane season. I hate it. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. <sighs> I hate. I love rain. I hate lightning. With a passion. What's up ladies and gentlemen? So we're here at the house today because I did the intro on the water. New. What do you expect in a subdivision? People are mowing. Hmm. All we're missing now is like a helicopter and a, you know, a couple dogs barking and got a great intro. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs>